Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell stopped by Hazard Community and Technical College earlier today for a luncheon. There he talked about key issues impacting our nation and Commonwealth. WIMT's Dakota Makris was there. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell discussed hot topic issues still very much on everyone's mind, including record high gas prices and inflation. Gas Buddy reports the average price of gas in Kentucky is $4.60 per gallon. The senator blames the Biden administration's $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan package. A gargantuan political mistake not joined in by a single solid Republican in the House or the Senate. Among other topics, the senator discussed immigration, saying the southern border is, quote, functionally open. This is a country built on immigration, but built on legal immigration and not illegal immigration. And this functionally open border creates a, contributes to the crime problem as well. McConnell says he agrees with the Biden administration on one thing, helping Ukraine win its war against Russia in Hazard, Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. Senator McConnell called the war in Ukraine pure evil on display. Dakota will have more from the minority leader on topics including abortion and the ACLU lawsuit here in Kentucky coming up tonight at 6. The Challenger Learning Center in Hazard hosted a unique learning opportunity for children in Eastern Kentucky schools today, inviting student ambassadors from schools across the region to communicate directly with the International Space Station. The student ambassadors had the opportunity to record questions to send to astronauts at NASA. It will be a bit of a wait to get their answers, though. Students and their families will be invited back later this year to have their questions answered by the astronauts on live television. You can't just say, hey, I want to talk to the International Space Station and pick up your phone. Uh, we had to compete for this. It took about 18 months for us to go through the full process, and we were very lucky to be selected. The live stream will be broadcast on NASA TV on August 22nd and is open for public viewing. Bit of a toasty day continues around the mountains today. We have brought those temperatures up into the upper 80s and low 90s. The good news is that humidity is not quite back yet, though it's on its way. I-64 at Moorhead, all quiet at this hour. Not much in the way of cloud cover there. Heading uh, back towards Buffalo Mountain here in Perry County. Mid 80s at the moment here in Perry County. And just a few scattered fair weather clouds. Temperatures middle and upper 80s around the region and our first 90 degree temperature of the day. Irvin's checked in at 90 right now, but most of us remain in uh, the middle and upper 80s, which is not far from normal where we should be this time of year. The reason it feels warmer, obviously we have warmer air in place, but also we've got those dew points back in the middle and upper 50s and even low 60s. And as those creep up, we're going to start to feel the mugginess return. Pinpoint Doppler is a clean sweep around the mountains. We back on out. Yeah, showers not far away from the Kentucky-Tennessee border. But again, they're just small showers. And I think the vast majority of us stay dry as we head into tonight. So that WIMT weather app will come in handy as we continue to see potential for showers return. Not necessarily tonight. You see clear skies as we run through the evening and early overnight before we bottom out in the mid-60s tonight. But showers are not far away. The details on that as we head towards our 4th of July holiday weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? Evan, thank you. President Biden announced the U.S. is beefing up its military presence in Europe to act as a deterrent to Russia. The move comes as Finland and Sweden are about to become full NATO members after a deal was struck with Turkey over its objections to their inclusion. CBS's Natalie Brand has more from the White House. Speaking alongside NATO Secretary General, President Biden announced Wednesday the U.S. will bolster its military presence in Europe in the face of Russia's continued threat. Today I'm announcing the United States will enhance our force posture in Europe and respond to the changed security environment as well as strengthening our collective security. The administration says that will include the first permanent U.S. presence in Poland, adding two F-35 squadrons to the U.K., deploying additional air defense in Germany and Italy, 
as well as stationing two more destroyers in Spain. Together, our allies, we're going to make up sure that NATO is ready to meet threats in all directions across every domain, land, air, and the sea. And in a historic move, NATO will expand, extending a formal invitation to Sweden and Finland after Turkey dropped its opposition Tuesday. NATO also says collectively it will significantly increase the number of troops on standby from 40,000 to more than 300,000. President Putin has not succeeded in closing NATO's door. Uh, he is getting the opposite of what he wants. He wants less NATO. Uh, President Putin is getting more NATO. Finland and Sweden had applied for NATO membership in response to Russia's war on Ukraine, now entering the fifth month. Who of you does not agree that this is terrorism? Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia has now become a terrorist state after it launched a missile strike on a shopping mall, killing at least 18 people. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. President Zelensky joined the NATO meeting via a video conference and NATO countries pledged to continue to support Ukraine in its fight against Russia for survival. Leaders from G7 countries are earmarking up to $5 billion in funds to help address global food insecurity. They say this move is needed to counter the production problems caused by Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. The United States will foot more than half the bill, with President Joe Biden committing nearly $3 billion toward the effort. The White House says the Russian attack has hindered grain shipments, which will force tens of millions of people into poverty this year. The Supreme Court ruled today that states can be sued by veterans alleging discrimination in the workplace. The 5-4 to four ruling strengthens protections for state-employed veterans returning to the workforce after serving in the reserves or National Guard. The decision came after a former Texas state trooper, Leroy Torres, claimed he was forced out of a job after returning from Iraq. Torres says he could no longer serve as a trooper due to lung damage from exposure to burn pits in Iraq and sought a comparable job but was denied his request. After eventually resigning, Torres filed suit under federal law but lost in Texas state court, leading him to appeal to the Supreme Court. Demand for abortion pills is growing following the U.S. Supreme Court's decision on abortion rights. Instead of having a surgical procedure, medication abortion is a method to end pregnancy by taking a combination of pills approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The first pill is called my, my, uh, Mifprostone, and the second pill is called Misoprostol. Not sure if I pronounced those right. The FDA says both are safe and effective up to 11 weeks after the first day of the last menstrual period. It's extremely safe. It's safer than Viagra. It's safer than most of the over-the-counter painkillers, for example. Sourcing medication abortion pills online is safe um, if the pills are sourced from reputable um, outlets. Some anti-abortion advocates say the next battle over abortion rights may be over access to these abortion pills, with some Republican governors already signaling they'll take action to block access to abortion pills. Coming up on First at Four, an alarming uptick in fireworks-related injuries. Tips on keeping those July 4th celebrations safe. Plus, a look at that July 4th forecast. Hot and muggy seems to be the name of the game. I'll have the details on that coming up.